Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. My name is Aziz. I'm a full-time working mum of a four-year-old and a two-year-old and today I'm going to share with you my monthly favourites, which is more of a recent favourite because I've been collecting this list for quite a few months now. I've got um, fashion, skincare, homeware stuff and there's just a lot of great things in here. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. I'm going to start with hair care because that's where I seem to be getting a lot of the questions about on Instagram and the first product that you guys are asking me a lot about is my Revlon One Step Hair Dryer. Now I, my hair is naturally quite curly and thick so I usually stay away from products and you know tools that say that will straighten my hair in one go because for me it just never seems to work, it never seems to straighten my roots the way I want and it always seems to leave my ends quite frizzy and just you know like very not very nice but one day I think YouTube recommended four or five reviews of this product to me and I ended up watching about 15 of them and got absolutely fascinated by it I watched lots of curly haired girls reviewing this product and raving about it so I decided to buy one and I love it now for me, it's still not a one step hair dryer. I have to use this as part of a hair care routine. But what this does is that it takes all of the hard work of the pre hair straightening process for me. What I tend to do is wash my hair and then dry it fully with this hairbrush, which doesn't take long at all. For me, for my hair, it takes probably, I'd say about 20 minutes to dry my hair fully, like bone dry. And then I just go over with my steam pod to kind of straighten my roots a bit, model the ends of my hair, and just give it that smooth finish that a hair straightener gives to your hair. But I find that this makes my hair so silky and soft and shiny and I've been just really enjoying using this. So if you have wavy hair this will probably be the only tool that you need to style your hair. It is so good and if you have curly hair like mine you can you can always use it as a two-step routine and just kind of using your hair straightener to do a lot less hard work which is what I love about it. I don't have to spend so long styling and straightening my hair because it's mostly straight after I use this. I just have to go over certain parts of my hair and just make it look a lot smoother. I really do love this. It's not too expensive and a lot of people compare it with the GHD Glide which is a lot more expensive than this one. Next for hair care I've recently invested in the Steam Pod Steam Activated Cream and the Steam Activated Serum. Now if you've watched my videos you know how much I love my Steam Pod. I've used Steam Pod for oh my gosh, nearly five years now and I absolutely love it. I wouldn't go back to normal straighteners. It just gives my hair a much smoother finish than normal straighteners and it doesn't dam damage my hair half as much. But I just never thought before of buying the hair care line of Steam Pod and this just makes my hair look like I'm straight out of the salon. It smells so nice. You don't have to use much of these. So the cream I usually use all over my hair, like one little pump, spread it all over my hair and then the serum I focus more on the ends of my hair and areas that I feel like could do with the extra shine and I also use this after I style my hair as well. Now let's move on to my next homeware item which is my fairy lights curtain that I have in my living room. Now I can't show it to you right now but I will insert a picture that I posted on Instagram. I just love it. It completely transformed our living room, made it so much more Christmassy. I saw something similar on Sarah This Mama Life Instagram. I often see on the background of her videos that she has a fairy lights curtain in her house and I went on Instagram and I ordered a fairy lights curtain. I ordered some sticky hooks that are see-through so it looks perfectly seamless on on the wall and everybody who's seen it in our house has complimented and commented on how nice it looks. I sent probably about 40 to 45 links via direct messages on Instagram. So I'm going to leave it linked in the description box below if you want to have a look. It is, it's just such an easy thing to add that festive touch to your house and I'm even considering leaving it beyond Christmas because I just love it so much and it makes the room really cozy and festive. Right, now let's move on to beauty. I realise I've been talking for ages and my kids are due to come home any minute now so I really have to finish this. I have two beauty products to share with you. First is the Benefit 
Brow Styler. I love, love, love this so much. So it's a little waxy pencil on the one end and the other end is a powder that comes with a little applicator. So that's what the bottom bit looks like. It has a little applicator and a powder inside. You can use both of them together or you can use them separately. I tend to use the pencil side because it's just so quick and easy. It's made my eyebrow routine so much quicker. I really, really love this and highly recommend it. I've given this to friends and family as well for them to try because I love it so much. I can do my brows now in less than a minute. It's just so quick and easy and it lasts all day long. And you can do a strong brow, you can do a more natural brow. It's just amazing. I absolutely love this. And another thing I've been loving is the Olay Luminous Whip. This is a moisturiser and it's so thin, it feels like you're putting water on your face. I was using the Olay 7-in-1, I think it's called moisturiser, that ran out and I moved straight to this one and oh my god, I just love it. It's very thin, you don't need to use much of it at all and it feels like it melts on the skin. I don't know how to explain it. When you pick a little bit of the product it has quite a thick texture to it but when you smooth it on the skin it seems to melt into the skin which is such a bizarre feeling but it's lovely I really love applying this onto my face it just disappears into the skin and it feels like silky water on your face I absolutely love it I find it a pleasure to apply and my skin really likes it too. I've been using Olay products for my skincare for over two years now. I worked with them, yeah, two years ago when I discovered these products and I've just loved it, kept repurchasing them because my skin just really reacts well to it. So that's it for beauty. Now for fashion, I've got a few skirts to share with you. So since going back to work and working in an office, I've been wearing skirts and tights a lot more. I've never been one to wear skirts, um, but I've just fallen in love with it and with like just the general look of skirts. And I found a type that I like. So I have three that I usually alternate. And this is one from H&M, which is my favorite one. I generally size up on skirts because I find it much more comfortable instead of like, you know, being really tight on my waist. So I'm usually a size 10 and I go for a size 12 on these. This one has a little bit of a stretch to it, which is quite nice and it's lined as well. So I love this one from H&M. I also really like this one from Primark. Uh, the H&M one is quite recent, so I'll leave a link below. This one is old so you won't be able to find this one. This one is more of a suede material and it's got the buttons on the front and this is what the back looks like and the other one is this one also from Primark I think last year and they're all very similar as you can see but I've just loved wearing skirts recently and I think this style really really suits me. So if you have any more recommendations for skirts let me know in the comments below. A lot of you on Instagram recommended New Look and what else? I think Primark and H&M. These have been my favorite things to wear to work recently. Moving on to tech, we really love our Google Nest Hub Max. We used to have a Google Home Hub in the kitchen, which is the old name, and now they have rebranded it to Google Nest Hub. So they have the Nest Hub and the Nest Hub Max. The Max has a Nest indoor security camera built into it, so you have all of the features that you had on the Google Home Hub, like the Google Assistant, being able to watch Netflix, YouTube, you can use it as a smart speaker, Spotify, and you also have the security camera built into it, which can be very handy if you go away on holiday because you can keep an eye on it from your phone and see what's going on. I absolutely love ours, so much so that we've bought two Google Nest Hubs to give as gifts for family because we just think it's such a great addition to the family and to a household. I have my little morning routine set up on there, so when I'm downstairs making school lunches in the morning, I have a series of things that come on like the weather, traffic, 
traffic, the news, and then podcasts and things like that. So I thought I would mention it because I haven't mentioned that one yet. I think I've shown my Google Home Hub in a video before, but I haven't shown the, the Hub Max, the next Nest Max, Google Nest Hub Max. Now for TV and movies, Frozen 2 was absolutely amazing. We took the kids to watch it and I think I loved it more than them. We have been listening to the songs on Spotify non-stop. We really enjoyed it. I don't know if you've taken your kids to see or taken yourselves to see it in the cinema, but we really, really enjoyed it. And we're actually thinking of going back and watching it again, because now that we know all the songs, it will be even more enjoyable. Um, a lot of people were saying that it was quite dark and scary. I didn't find it scary and my kids didn't find it scary. It was much darker than the first one, but I felt like there were no real baddies. Like in the first one, you had the obvious baddies. In the second one, it wasn't scary in that sense. It was just much more sort of like darker storyline, but it just wasn't scary. I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old and they were both absolutely fine. There were moments where they were like, oh, what's going on there? But it wasn't like scary that they were crying or upset or anything. So yeah, definitely go and watch Frozen whilst it's still in the cinema. And the last thing on my list is podcasts. So I have a few to share with you. The first one is the Mother Flipping Awesome podcast. This is a podcast which is kind of a spin-off of the um, Hand in Hand Parenting podcast, which was hosted by Abigail Wald and Elle Kwan. So Abigail has gone on to do her own podcast called The Mother, Mother Flipping Awesome. And the way that it's set up, it's so, so nice. Um, she is talking to real parents and kind of sharing that experience of solving certain problems and dealing with certain issues. So the parent is sharing with her their frustrations or whatever is going on. And she kind of coaches them through that problem and you get to listen to that conversation. And I take so much out of it for my own parenting experience and my own journey with my kids. And I find it so, so interesting and helpful. Another podcast that I've loved for a really long time is The Knowledge Project. I listen to every single episode. Shane is such a great host. It's one of those podcasts that you just can't get enough of it. There's so much to get out of it. Every episode, I feel like I learn something new. I just love Shane and he always asks the right questions at the right time. It's very like food for thought, you know, like brain food kind of uh, podcast. And I absolutely love podcasts like that. If you know any more of these kinds of podcasts, then leave a comment below and let me know because I'm really looking for more podcasts like that. And the last one that I've discovered recently is the Storyteller Murder Most Foul. This is a crime podcast and it was fascinating. It's the story of a murder that happened in Scotland 20 years ago and it's the 20th anniversary of that murder this year. So it was the perfect time to kind of remember the victim and to tell this story and it was just a really fascinating story. If you like true crime and true crime movies and podcasts, then you will really enjoy this one. Isla Traquere is such a great storyteller. It was like giving me shivers down my spine when she was telling the story. So I'll leave links to all these podcasts below. And I think that is everything. Uh, let me just check I haven't missed anything. No, that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you guys are not subscribed already to my channel, please make sure you subscribe so you know when the next video goes up on my channel. And I will see you next time. Bye.